I think it's fair to say that a lot of modern websites have a serious problem with information density. So taking this Apple page for example, on this page you can only really see two products being advertised, this one and this one here. But if we scroll all the way down, as we'll notice there's a bunch of other things on here as well, but without scrolling you'd have no idea those are there. But being on a 1080p screen, there's no reason why you can't actually go and use all of this extra space and have everything where the user needs to see it as they load up the page. Along with there being issues related to security and privacy with the ever increasing user tracking and advertising. And over time there have been some projects that try to address the web in a very different way. One of those being Project Gemini, the topic for today. Now, one thing I do want to mention before we get into it is that Project Gemini isn't trying to replace the web as it exists, unlike some people may want it to do. What it's trying to do is exist alongside the existing web and be used for use cases where it actually makes sense to use, like say for example blogs and microblogs and things like that, but there's many use cases where using something like Project Gemini would completely break the way that people use the web and would make it basically unusable. Now, what Gemini aims to be, as they describe in their FAQ, is the web stripped back to its absolute essence. So what they mean by this is that the Gemini protocol has very, very simple requests. Basically, the only request that exists is a modified version of a GET request. And if you want to do things like client-side scripting or user tracking or styling, none of that is possible inside of Gemini. The documents that are being used are very, very simple documents. They're effectively just a modified version of Markdown that has been standardized so you can actually have documents that work consistently. But it's not just a remake of Gopher. So what they say is that it's also Gopher souped up and modernized a little. Now when they say a little, they very much mean a little. It's not existing in this, I guess, middle ground between the modern web and Gopher. I would say it's very much closer to Gopher while, I guess, addressing some of the limitations that protocol has. Here are some of the things they wanted to address over Gopher. Unambiguous use of arbitrary non-ASCII character sets. Identifying binary content using MIME types instead of a small set of badly outdated item types. Now, the benefit of using MIME types is MIME types are what you're using on your regular Linux system already. So this is very well documented and you already have applications that are designed to work around MIME types. So say you have a, I don't know, an MP4 file. This is going to be a video slash MP4 file. And if you have, say, MPV running those files, then that will make it much easier to integrate a Gemini client into the rest of your system without having some extra configuration. Clearly distinguishing successful transactions from failed ones, and the way they're doing this is with error codes. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the specification, there is a big long list of them in here. So if you want to go and implement your own client, it tells you what each of the status codes that could possibly be returned by the server actually mean, and how you could go about interpreting them. Linking to non-gopher resources via URLs without ugly hacks. And from what I've seen, this works quite well. And from the clients that I've tried, when you open up, say, like a HTTPS link from your client, it's just going to go and open it up in your regular web browser and show you the site there. Redirects to prevent broken links when content is moved or rearranged, and domain-based virtual hosting. Now, the other big thing they mention in here is that text in Gemini documents is wrapped by the client to fit the device's viewport, rather than being hard wrapped at 80 characters with new line characters. So this means that you can have content that works really well on a phone because it's going to actually adjust the size based on the size of the device, but the same content should also work very well on a PC where you have a much wider display. Now Gemini does have some advantages over HTTP and HTML. One of those being that because it's such a simple protocol, it can't support things like external loading. So what I mean by this is, let's say you open up any regular website. What's going to happen is the HTML is going to be downloaded first, and in a lot of cases, the HTML is going to have a link to say, hey, I need some CSS from this server over here, I need some JavaScript from this server over here, and then it has to go and download those as well. And those might have downloads from other places as well, and it's going to be this big mess you have to deal with, and on a slower connection, this is why you notice that even really simple websites take a very long time to load. But Gemini doesn't have this problem, everything's going to be in this very simple document as you download it. And depending on the way you interpret this, 
No support for client-side scripting can be an advantage. I know there's a lot of people who really don't like the, I guess, over usage of JavaScript on the web, and they'd much rather have everything be done as the page actually loads, or if you need some scripting, then do it on the server side. And in the case of Gemini, you can still do server side scripting, and that's how things like some of the Gemini search engines work. Now, Gemini has a very simple specification, and in the documentation they mention, you can probably build a reasonably functional client in 100 to 200 lines of any modern programming language, but it's not like you have to go and build your own client because some of them already exist. One of those being M4, which is the main one I've been trying out. So this one basically works in a very similar way to things like W3M. So if you use something like that, it'll feel fairly familiar. So let's go into the Gemini documentation, go to the Gemini FAQ, and this is the same page that we were reading before, but this time it's loaded up inside of the Gemini protocol instead of inside of HTTP. But there are some other clients that exist, like say Bambadillo, and there are some GUI clients that exist as well, and we can see a list of those over on the Gemini website, along with the other terminal-based clients as well. So we have Infora, Oscar, AV98, Bombadillo, Alpha, and then for graphical clients, there's Caster, Geminaut, Crystal, and Lagrange. It seems like most people who end up using a GUI client go with Lagrange though. Now, even though Gemini has some nice advantages, it does also have some pretty big shortcomings as well. And one of those is the serious lack of extensibility. So Gemini isn't just a simple protocol that you can build upon and you know make really cool things from there. If you wanna go and do so, that's fine. But then you would basically be creating an entirely new project because Gemini is intended to have a very rigid and very solidified protocol just like how Gopher is, which basically hasn't changed outside of some minor tweaks for about 30 years. This does definitely give the advantage of stopping things like feature creep and eventually climbing back to where the modern web is, but it does also stop the protocol from addressing very, very serious limitations it has, like the fact that it doesn't support things like caching, compression, and the restarting of downloads, so while video can be served over Gemini, along with things like images and other sort of binary files, it's very difficult to do so, and outside of small files probably should be avoided. And I think this is one of the things that desperately needs to be fixed with Gemini, Otherwise, it very much limits what you can actually do with it. When I saw the comments on DT's video for this, I saw a couple of the same concerns, and that was people asking, why do you need a whole new protocol for this? Why not just use a subset of HTTP and HTML? Because using something like Gemini requires whole new clients, whole new servers, entirely new ways of working, and even though these tools are fairly simple to work with and get started with, it's still a bit of a problem that does need to be thought about. So the reason why you want to have a whole new protocol is because there's no way to guarantee that the site you're visiting on HTTP is actually going to be using a minimal subset of the protocol and of HTML. But by creating its own new protocol, then you can say that everything on this protocol is going to be defined in this specific way and you're certain it's going to work with whatever client you're going to use. One thing I probably should mention is you don't necessarily need to download a whole new application just for working with Gemini. Just like how there are Gopher plugins for your web browser, there are also Gemini plugins as well. The only one I know of is Gemini's and this one is for Firefox. I don't know if a Chromium one exists as well. If someone knows about it, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below, but this is the only one I could actually find. It does sort of defeat the whole point of using Gemini because you're still running Firefox and even though you're loading up just a basically a markdown document, Firefox is still going to be using two or three gigabytes of RAM in the background. If you're happy using it like that, that's fine, but I'd prefer to have something in my terminal which is much, much lighter to work with. Now, when it comes to these Gemini documents, I mentioned they use a modified version of Markdown. Now, the reason why they decided to do this is because Markdown isn't really, I guess, that well-defined of a specification and very heavily encourages extensibility. So, if you, say, work with GitHub Markdown, that may not be, you know, fully compatible with Fireball Markdown and Pandoc Markdown and Brody Markdown. That doesn't exist, but I can make it exist. And when you download a parsing library, it's not always clear what version of Markdown it's going to be working with, so it's difficult to determine how you should actually be going about using it. But the real big reason 
is when you define your own document specification, you can define exactly what you want to support. So in the case of Gemini, it doesn't support inline images or inline links. If you want to have a link, it always has to be on a separate line. So you might have noticed over here, we have this big long list of links here. You can't actually have a link, say in this text box here, it would have to be below it or somewhere else on the page. I personally don't like this limitation, but it does make it much easier to write a client and that's part of the reason why they decided to do it. Now, the big thing with Gemini is it's not intended to replace the existing web and the devs are fully aware with this. So what they say is that not for a minute, nor does anybody involved with Gemini want to destroy Gopher Space. Gopher Space is just the term used for the, I guess, the Gopher sites or Gopher holes, I think they're called. And Gemini is not intended to replace either Gopher or the web, but to coexist peacefully alongside them as one more option which people can freely choose to use if it suits them. In the same way that many people currently serve the same content via Gopher and the web, people will be able to buy host or try host content on whichever combination of protocols they think offer the best match to their technical, philosophical, and aesthetic requirements and those of their intended audience. Because as I touched on earlier, there are a lot of things that just wouldn't really be possible or practical on something like Gemini. So for example, let's say you wanted to go and do an online shopping site. Technically, there are ways it could work. So you can actually send data over Gemini, and this is how you can do things like search engines. And you can send quite a bit of text back, and it is going to be encrypted with TLS. But... There's no real way to do things like shopping carts and various other things that you're just used to on the modern web. You could still do it if you wanted to basically make shopping with email, but it wouldn't be that convenient. And doing things like modifying your order, while technically could be done by giving the user some sort of unique identifier and then just doing a bunch of scripting on the server side, it's not really that practical. Another thing is with maps. So technically you could do things like address lookup, but I don't think it really makes that much sense to do it over Gemini when there are just much, much simpler ways to do it on the modern web. We can actually use things like GPS to get directions from where you are and directions as you're actually moving. But then there are some other things, like let's say a blog, for example. A blog, there's no reason why this couldn't work on Gemini. And this is hex DSLs. And if we go to, I think it's link one here, this is basically just a little microblogger. What he has is a very simple bash script, which will just push a new line of text to a text document and then sync it to the server. And then because all it's doing is just serving that text document, you've just gone and updated what's going to be served to the next user who sees it. And this works absolutely perfectly on something like Gemini. It's just all text. If you need to show an image, you can link to the image and then you'll load it up in something like your web browser or you can download it and then open it up in your regular image viewer. And I think this works quite well. So let me know, is Gemini something you actually find interesting and you might actually go about using? I might do some follow-up videos on it and I'm well aware that I'm late to the topic. Before someone's like, hey, Hex DSL and Mental Outlaw and DT, I've already done videos on this. I know. I don't care. You guys don't watch me for timely content. If you watch this far into the video, I'm sure you're happy with what you saw. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my working links down below, where you can go and do all of that stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>